okay, hi guys. So, I'm going to tell you this right now. This is going to be a fantastic series. And I know this because I already recorded this video once. I just recorded it, and I found out that I did not have my narration going. See, there's this program called Audacity. Let me, let me show you briefly, just briefly. I want to I share with you my sadness. Here's this thing. It's called Audacity. It shows my talking on, on here, right here. Oh wait, you can't see my mouse because I turned that off. So this program allows me to speak at the same time as the recording with like a higher quality narration. Unfortunately, <sighs> I forgot to turn that on. So I just did the entire video and there is no sound. Oh, the agony. Okay, so um, if I forget to say something, I'm so sorry. But that's because I already feel like I've said it all once, because I have. Here we go. Welcome to the Learn to Lead series. This is a series where I will be going through all of the different textbooks within Simulator Patrol's Learning to Lead. Days at the textbooks. <laughs> There's four of them. One for each phase of leadership, essentially. And it talks about a lot of different stuff involving leadership. It's not, it, it does not tell you this is how you are a leader. Th this is what you are. And this is what you must be. The beauty of leadership is that you can do whatever you want and be a leader. Now, whether or not you're effective depends on you and how you execute those things. But you can still be a leader no matter what you do. With this, we will be going over uh, chapter one of uh, the first book, which is pretty exciting. It's riveting. And we will be discussing things from the source of leadership to the cadet oath. We're only going about halfway through chapter one. And the reason why I'm doing that is so that I can split up the different parts and if people only want to hear specific things that they don't understand or they want more clarification on, then that will allow them to. One of the reasons, an additional reason why I'm doing this series is because I personally am a very visual learner, which means I need to look at something and like hear it at the same time in order to understand concepts better. And I personally also learn better if I force myself to teach other people a concept because then it reinforces it with me. I, I did this about, uh, well, 2010, right? So uh, a few years ago. I started with Achievement 1, which was which is the first chapter of the book. And with that, you, you don't always remember everything. And I'm taking my SPOTS exam, which is the highest achievement in the cadet program. This is helping me study for that. And I'm hoping that at the same time, you will study with me, which means this needs to be a dialogue. This needs to be a conversation between the two of us and whoever you're watching this with. There aren't really any videos out there that discuss the different chapters within the Learn to Lead series, and hopefully people will be able to utilize it and learn a little something out of it. You don't have to watch the entire thing, you can watch it selectively. I'm going to have two or three parts for each chapter, and then at the end of each textbook, essentially, after we get through all of this, I'm going to be having one review video, which goes over the main overarching ideas for it, and it'll kind of review those things. So if you're taking a milestone test, such as the Wright Brothers exam, you can also go along with the video and review your notes and be like, oh yeah, I remember that. I almost forgot about that. Thank you for reminding me. Reinforcing it. If I ask a question in the video, I ask that you please write something down and answer for me. The more you interact with me in this, or at least the more you get engaged with the video, the more you're going to get out of it. If, if you don't do anything with the video, you just watch it or you have it playing in the background, which I know some of you will do, you won't get as much out of it. You still might hear a few things that I'm saying, but at times I might start talking a little bit more quickly, and then I might slow down at certain parts to make sure that you can understand what I am saying. But still, it's good to kind of sit down, have a notebook out, maybe take notes. I personally, this is like my cap notebook for this year only. I have so many different notes in here from doing 
ground school training to giving people feedback on classes to, to a whole hullabaloo of different things but it's always good to have a notebook so that's one of my first tips always have a notebook with you with a nice little handy dandy pen for me with that i like to have oh dear i like to have a clipboard that holds my stuff so when i go to meetings I have my notebook, and then I have a few pens. I sometimes have a ruler if we need to do inspections or something like that, and that can help. Um, but th this is just kind of a side note. Always have a notebook, because you're always going to want to write something down somewhere. If you don't, and you need a notebook, I guess you might have a smartphone. If you have a smartphone, not all of you do. You can go into notes. Writing things down with your hand has been scientifically proven to help you retain information more. It's proven. And like, feeling the pen go over the surface of the paper and just, whew, it's a beautiful process. Anyway, so that, that's a little bit of a tangent. And I know, uh, at the beginning of the video, I like went all over the place. However, we're going to start doing this now. So... I have an option down below in the description that allows you to skip to this point. You have skipped to this point, hopefully. Um, <laughs> here, here we are in chapter one, learn to lead. And we're going to do this now. Okay, so what is leadership? I, I don't know. What, what is leadership? Sorry, that was really frothy. A question that you should be asking yourselves over the course of the series is what is leadership? In this video primarily we're going to be discussing the source of leadership and how you can develop your leadership skills over time. I first want you to think about what leadership is to you. Now I want you to write something down along those lines. I'll give you five more seconds. Three, two, one, stop. Okay, some of you may have written a definition of what you think leadership is. Some of you may have drawn a picture, if you're creative. I, I don't know if I would have drawn a picture. Some of you may have drawn a picture. Some of you may have written in a, down an example of good leadership that you've seen or bad leadership that you've seen. No matter what, your answers are all probably correct. Leadership is very subjective because anyone can technically be a leader. If you're walking down the hallway with a group of friends and your friends are just kind of chatting but you're a little bit farther ahead of the group and you turn and you sit down at like a lunch table or something like that, your friends are most likely going to follow, right? No, that by definition, would probably make you a leader at that point. Anyway, sorry, that, that's going into something else that we're doing like in later in the series, but anyone can be a leader, is what I'm saying. The source of leadership, it can occur naturally, and you can also develop it with experience. Some people are just born with like this charisma and can get people to follow them no matter what they're doing. Um, examples of this are like uh, Jake Paul, um, as some YouTubers or celebrities out there, like Ellen DeGeneres or uh, uh, Kim Kardashian. Uh, pe people are constantly influencing other people. Uh, President of the United States as well, or Chiefs of Staff, uh, or Chief of Staff of the Air Force. A, a lot of different people are constantly leading others. I'm sorry. Did I just... Hmm. You can be born with it. You can also develop the ability over time. Weird hand gestures. With that, for example, if someone's extroverted, they are more likely to be interpersonal, or they'll have higher interpersonal skills with other people, which means they're pretty good at interacting and communicating with other people. Just naturally, they have that ability. Me, I'm introverted. 
which means I get my energy from being by myself. So, like, I like doing puzzles for fun. Or crocheting. I'm not so much the party kind of person and go with, like, all these different people and do that fun stuff. No. I am not a fan. I'm okay with talking to other people. That's because I have developed the ability to through experiences, which is why I have this lovely man with the podium. Because as you gain more experiences, the more you can use the knowledge you have in order to more effectively lead other people. No one's going to be a perfect leader. No. You won't be more than a perfect leader. Even when you are old, you will never be the perfect leader. Because people are constantly learning, and that's, that's the beauty of leadership. No one's ever perfect at it, and there's so many different approaches that you can take to it. Sorry, I like it. Anyway, so, those are the two primary sources of leadership. Anyway, so, one of the biggest things that the chapter discusses is warrior spirit, which is the condition of the heart. But what does it actually mean? Having warrior spirit is having the ability to defend your personal honor. Who and what you are. If you're lying, cheating, stealing, or tolerating other people who do that kind of stuff, then you don't have very good warrior spirit. There, warrior spirit is something that is essential to who and what you are. If you are lying about stealing someone's candy bar, then you'll have that guilt on your conscience. You will know that that person probably doesn't trust you as much because they might be suspicious of you, and you might even get a bad reputation from it. Which goes into the benefits of having a good warrior spirit and being willing to follow the core values, which we'll, we'll discuss a little bit more later, and being able to do those kind of things. So, if you have a good, if you have warrior spirit and the benefits of it, um, you can have a clear conscience, a good reputation, and trust and respect with other people. And you'll be able to have that positive learning environment in which everyone will thrive. You want people to thrive, because then they can do good things, and you can do good things too. And Nicole. So, I want you to think of a time of when you had to have warrior spirit. And that you were able to use that in order to grow. Okay. Keep doing it. I'll chill out here. Okay, we're going to move on to the next thing, which is the core values. The core values, I will read them off for you, as you can obviously see on your screen. Integrity first, volunteer service, excellence only do, and respect. All four of these are essential. Now, all the different military branches and like organizations might have different core values. Civil Air Patrol takes the ones from the Air Force and kind of applies a different twist to them, because people who are in the Air Force are getting paid, people in Civil Air Patrol are volunteering, so it's... I mean, yeah, we, we, we aren't paid people. Anyway, with integrity, the textbook definition is doing the right thing when no one is looking. Now I'm going to give you an example of this. The other day I was walking down the street and there was a piece of trash, a nice little Lay's yellow bag, scuttling down the sidewalk. Someone had thrown it out their car window. If someone with integrity was in that situation, what would they do? Write it down really briefly. What would the person with integrity do if they saw a piece of trash scuttling down the sidewalk? They would maybe throw it away and pick it, well, pick it up and throw it away. 
maybe, right? They, they would do the right thing. Now, if you have integrity, there's also the no one's watching part. If I am surrounded by a complete crowd of strangers, would I still pick up that piece of trash? I, I think I would, personally. But some people may not feel comfortable. There's also social norming and stuff like that, which we will go over a little bit later. But doing the right thing when no one's there, picking up that trash, not expecting that appraisal, is the true example of integrity. Volunteer service. You are doing stuff without expecting anything in return as well. Um, you, you're, you're just doing the right thing, you're helping out. Um, Civil Air Patrol has a few different things in it, like doing emergency services. People volunteer to do that. They aren't paid. If we're doing a ground team mission, and we're looking for an ELT signal, and we're driving out to the middle of nowhere with, with our ELPR, or the thing that kind of detects the ELT or the emergency locating transmitter, uh, we're volunteering our time. We're not paid to do it. Uh, same thing with air crews as well, when we're helping look in the sky and we're taking photographs of like emergencies or disasters on the ground, or if we're looking for missing people with mission scanner or observer, and the pilots are also not paid either. So they're volunteering their time for a greater cause, and for the benefit of everyone in the community, which is really awesome. Excellence is a big thing. You should be doing your best, no matter what, in everything that you do. Doing 100%, 100% of the time can be very challenging. I'm not saying you have to do that, but what I'm saying is that if you conduct yourself with excellence with the task you're given, then you will be able to successfully accomplish it and learn from it. If you are trying your best, you don't succeed. That's okay. For me, if I make a mistake or if I mess up, I normally don't consider it a failure unless I don't learn from it. That, that's at least me personally. I think there's like a saying like that out there. I, I get that saying because my freshman year of high school biology teacher had the poster of a cat with a bandage on his thumb. It was like a cartoon cat, so it was like a bandage on his thumb, and then he was sticking in another claw into the water with a fish with, like, really sharp teeth. And so, like, his finger had been, like, bitten, not bitten off, but, like, partially or something, and then, like, doing it again, and so he didn't technically learn from it, and the cat was failing. It's okay to make mistakes. That's not really part of excellence. Excellence is the effort in which you were putting into it. If that, does that make sense? It, it's the effort you're putting into something and not necessarily whether or not it's successful. Because that, that's a completely different component of it. If that makes sense. Hopefully it does. Always try to do your best. Because if you aren't doing your best, especially in, like, in, the, in those challenging situations, if you're being challenged by something... If you put in your best effort, you're going to get way more out of it than if you're like, well, it's difficult, so I'm not going to try anymore. And that's where you failed yourself then. At least, that, that's something that I have learned. And I'm not saying you're a failure. No, 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 no. I'm not saying you're a failure. But try to do your best, is what I'm saying. And then, R-A-S-P-E-C-T. We're not going to go into song. But respecting other people, respect is a two-way street. So if someone is disrespectful to you, you will say, I don't like you, and you won't respect them. And if you are demanding respect of someone and say, respect me, I am in charge of you, then the people are going to be like, no, I don't want to listen to you. Because <laughs> if you don't respect people, they won't respect you. That's the way the wind goes. Be, be a good person. 
That's literally what the core values are. Be a good person, do your best, and be, be nice. Treat others the way you want to be treated is the textbook cliched version of respect. Just do it. Simple enough, right? Now, I want you to give an example of a time that you have used the core values effectively in order to provide success to something that you were doing. I, I will give you an example if you would like. Little Johnny was having trouble with his test one day in his uh, chemistry class. And little Johnny saw little Susie to his side, who was doing so exemplarily well on the test. And she was almost done. In this multiple choice test, all the test versions were the same. He made sure of it. And so little Johnny, his eyes would creep not only from his paper, but to the side of his desk, and then over to little Susie's paper. And as he looked over, he would then bubble in exactly as she did, because of his, his eagle eye vision and being able to see the different answers that she was providing. And then Johnny handed in the test, proud of his work. That is an example of not using integrity. Wow, I just failed my own task. You're supposed to do it so that you use the core values effectively. I am so sorry. <laughs> okay, we, we can still salvage this. We can salvage this. Okay, he cheated on the test. But when the teacher asked him, Johnny said that he did cheat. So Johnny realized his mistake and he had cheated on the one test, but after that test, he never cheated again. And he learned a lesson in integrity. We're just gonna leave it at that. I am so sorry, guys. Anyway, so in order to live by the core values, there, there are a few different things that you should do. You should have self-awareness, self-discipline. You should have a positive attitude in addition to being accountable for your actions. With self-awareness, you should be aware of what, excuse me, I'll put my pen down. You should be aware of what you're doing, how you're doing, and like kind of looking at yourself as a whole in the best way that you can. If you don't really know how you're doing in something, then you can't really keep yourself in check either. With self-discipline, it's being able to focus on a specific task. If I told you that Every time that I am given an assignment at school, I finish that assignment the day of. That would be showing that I have great self-discipline with completing my homework in a timely manner. Some people procrastinate a lot and they're like, oh man, I've got to look at all of these memes or I need to go check on Twitter or Insta. And I, I am not hip with the times. I am not, but I think those are the things people are using. Facebook's dying out, right? think yeah so what was i saying self-discipline being able to focus so someone with self-discipline would say okay i'm going to turn off my phone click and i'm going to put it over here and i'm going to set a timer for 30 minutes and i'm solely going to work on this essay that i have to write for my one class and once that timer goes off i will take a five minute break and kind of chill out on my phone text my friends and be like hey <laughs> I'm taking a break, yay! And enjoying that, if you still wanna be social. If you don't and you wanna be like me, you might make a YouTube video really briefly and then go back to doing homework. <sighs> so, that, that's kinda how that works. Um, with attitude, let's say we have two cadets. I'm gonna give you an example. And I want you to say which cadet has positive attitude and which cadet has negative attitude. Cadets Cat and Mouse are at a parking event. Cadet Cat over here and Cadet Mouse over here. Cadet Mouse says to Cadet Cat, Cadet Cat, 
This is so boring. This sucks. Uh, we've only been here for like five minutes, and I am totally, totally not in support of this. Like, this is so silly. We should just not do this. Can we leave? Can we actually leave? And then Cadet Cat responds. Ugh. Oh, but Cadet Mouse, we could... We just started. We can have such a great time. I am super excited, and I think you should be too, because this is going to be a great opportunity for the squadron to make money, and we'll be able to have scholarships, and we'll be able to do different activities after this. Like, let's do this. We can do it. Come on. We're going to do this. So who had positive and who had negative? Cat and mouse. Who is positive? You could do this like Dora the Explorer and say it out loud. Who is positive? Okay, I, I, don't, I don't blame you if you're not going to talk, because that would be like talking to yourself, and if you just randomly say, CAT! 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 And someone's in your house, too, and they might be like, why why are they saying CAT? CAT? So a positive attitude was CAT CAT in that situation, and a negative was... Mouse. Correct. <laughs> CAT CAT! Try to show that there were good things about it. Cat Mouse was like, this is awful. Negative attitudes are infectious. So if you try to maintain that positive attitude, you can try to turn people who have had a negative attitude. But for the most part, it's not that those people who have negative attitudes force other people to have negative attitudes. It's that the people who have positive attitudes and see someone with a negative attitude, they'll be like, why does this person have a negative attitude? They should not be here if they, they have a negative attitude. They should leave. So if you have a negative attitude about something, you should be asking yourself why you're doing it. Find the why as to why you originally did it. And then try to find other people who have positive attitudes and try to see it from a different perspective is my recommendation. If there are other people. If there aren't, then you're going to have to have some serious self-reflection, honest conversations with yourself. Maybe. Anyway, and then the last thing is accountability. So accountability is being able to answer for any actions that you have done or anything that you've said. So with Johnny, he was held accountable for cheating on the test. There! I use the example effectively. He he was held accountable and he got a zero on the test for cheating off of little Susie. And little Susie got her 95 for doing really well on it. Just, if you do something and it may not have been the best thing, you still did it. And lying... Lying is a bad. Mm -mm. Now, I can give you a few examples about that. We'll go over it a little bit later, probably, on different scenarios. But just, if you do something, you did it. No one else did it. So make sure you're willing to accept responsibility for what you did, if you did anything. Okay, and the last thing that we're going to go over today is the cadet oath, which is a little long, which is as follows. I pledge that I will serve faithfully in the Civil Air Patrol Cadet Program, that I will attend meetings regularly, participate actively in unit activities, obey my officers, wear my uniform properly, and advance my education and training rapidly to prepare myself to be of service to my community, state, and nation. Oh, that is so long. But to summarize it, you are doing things with excellence because you are faithfully serving. You will attend meetings regularly, going to the weekly meetings, participate actively in unit activities like helping with parking events, going to a corn maze, um, helping out with different volunteer opportunities or fundraisers. Oh, uh, participate actively in your activities, obey my officers. If someone tells you that you should do something and they're asking you nicely, it's best if you listen to them because that's also respecting them and they'll respect you kind of deal as well. Because th this 
chapter is also primarily focused on personal leadership. So making sure you're doing the right thing and listening to your uh, officers. Obey my officers. Wear my uniform properly. Yesterday, I saw someone with an American flag patch on their shoulder. According to Cap Manual 39-1, you can't after January 2017. And at this time, it is August 2017. No, oh, excuse me, September. Wow, it is September. It is September. It's like halfway through September, too. Wow, okay, sorry. It's September, which is almost worse because that's nine months into the year. After January, we were no longer allowed to wear American flag patches. And so, were they wearing their uniform properly? No. Mm. That's not good. Wear my uniform properly. One second. Why is there so zoom so that I can see the wrong one? And advance my education and training rapidly to prepare myself to be of service to my community, state, and nation. That's two parts. So advancing education means if you are at the same grade for four or five years, you are not actively progressing and educating. Each of these different chapters has new concepts in it. Book knowledge. And there are also different positions that you should be serving as you are progressing. And if you are stuck at the same grade for a certain amount of time, like four or five years, I, yeah, I don't know what to tell you. Maybe, no, here, here's how I'm gonna explain this. Your insignia are kind of like your initial resume to people who meet you. So if you are going to a winning level, region level, national level activity, and people see, oh, this is a cadet senior airman, and you've been in for seven years, then you, you haven't been progressively promoting. And there are reasons why people stay in the same grade, like they might have to leave CAP for two or three years. I understand that, but it's if you're actively involved with the squadron for that amount of time and you're still not willing to promote it's like ah come on you can do this show that you are motivated still with that because no matter what position you're in no matter what grade you're at you're still going to be the same person that you are and people might perceive you just slightly differently because you've promoted but it's okay it's okay to show that you're improving and that you're progressing and people will support you Anyway, and then serving the community, state, and nation. It's overall serving the greater good of everything. Yeah. Wow. That was a really long video. I'm probably going to cut a few parts out of this, but overall, we went over the source of leadership in that it's natural for some people and that some people just develop the ability over time. Like me being introverted, I have developed the ability to talk to people more over time. And I originally was just very quiet, so I developed that. Where your spirit is the condition of the heart. And there are several benefits to it, including having a clear conscience, having a good reputation, being able to have a trusting, respectful environment with other people around you. The core values are integrity, voluntary service, excellence in all we do, and respect. And it's just kind of serving the greater good and doing the right thing. And the cadet oath, it's essentially just saying that you're willing to participate and be with other people in CAP and that you want to help grow alongside your peers and serve the country by volunteering. That does it for this episode, everyone. Please remember that I would like this to be as interactive as possible. Which means if I have two or three questions down in the comments below, I would like one or two answers at least, if not a few more. Just so that we can learn together and we can continue to review this material if you already know it. Or just go over a few new concepts for you. Thank you guys so much for watching. I appreciate the support. And that is all, folks. Until next time. Doodles.
we did it we did it we did it we did it we did it